Hi everyone, um, thanks Anna, my name is um, John, I'm 63, I live outside of Durham. This is new to me, um, so it'll be the first time I've done anything like this. I'd like to start off by seeing um, some of the beautiful souls and uh, videos on this um, site has um, give me a little bit of hope in humanity um, some brought tears to my eyes but the majority is really uplifting I've got too much to say I actually even wrote bullet points so I've just chucked that because I think it, it just maybe should come from my heart if I tell you a mini sort of version of where I am and where I've been um, this is my six month, almost seven months since this all began for me because I left um, a supply um, job working in special needs um, school. And as most people who work in special needs with hearts of gold will know that the children are challenging and the spitting and the other things they may throw at you. Um, and because I was saying things, um, coming from China, reading the papers, etc. seeing it on some of the news and listening to the stories of some of the stuff I was thinking. Yeah, I need to get out of here. Um, so it was about two weeks before actually schools closed. And of course the scare stories were, you know, this virus lives for 72 hours on metals, plastics, you know, whoa. Um, I didn't think at the time I was worried I left and um, so it gave me two weeks of um, starting to explore what this was um, and actually one of the first things that cropped up was um, an amazing guy Andrew Kaufman he his little piece, I don't know who he was uh, talking to, sorry, I can't remember the, um, who he was chatting to. Um, he, he basically, you know, virologist, uh, epidemiology, um, was saying that it already peaked in China and it was quite short-lived by looking at things. And I was saying, short-lived, okay, well, that means we might just have a couple of weeks and I'll, you know, be back to work, whatever. Um, but then he started talking about the test that he started to find that what they produced, the test was cocked up. Um, in layman's terms, because I am a layman, I'm not a virologist, he was basically saying they hadn't reduced the uh, virus down to its RNA, right to its core, which is what you should do. And then when you do test, you go, bing, there you go, you have this so-called COVID. But no, that it's still left residue, whatever, that basically, if you had a cold, a flu, typically cough, whatever, or COVID, it'll show positive. So it can show positive for many things. So this test is still the one that they're using around the world. The world, and that's what keeps freaking me out, that the control in the world, the World Health Organization, the United Nations, have actually nailed this on. They've done a bloody good job. But anyway, so this started to make me, you know, dive in deep as people are seeing lots of down the rabbit hole. And my God, the rabbit hole is um, a real warren. You just keep going down hole after hole and you find, you know, I mean, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I'm turned out to actually have doubts in um, anything now from our history to anything, basically everything. You have to question everything. So in reality, I, I now start to get the picture. And I live on my own and my mum's 88 and she lives, you know, about 30 miles away. And I hadn't seen her for six weeks. And once this picture started to appear that this is bullshit, um, it's nothing more than a flu. Now, if I had a cold flu, I, I would not go and see my mum. Never have done if I've got a little sniffles working in skills. You get them all the time, which is actually interesting. Six, seven months down the line, not being in skills, I haven't had a cough or a sneeze. I'm thinking, I'm vulnerable here to pick something up. 
which I think every one of us need to be careful. So my sister lives with my mum, and um, I said to her, look, I'm coming through. And she's, she's you know, oh, he kind of plays, you know. And I said, look, I'm going to send you some of this information. But this is again where alarm bell after alarm bell of everything, um, my sister would send back, go, what the hell have you sent this? And I'm going, it's really good information. These are top virologists and doctors, and um, you've all seen many of the things. And she says, there's nothing, it'll not open up. And sure enough, it'll be taken down. Now, this is not a shock to us now. Um, luckily, some of the things are staying up. But at the time, that was just confirmed to me. This is like almost Nazi driven behind the scenes. So, I've tried to keep myself sane, but Today I've done this because for the first time I've started to get a little bit twitchy and anxious. I'm thinking, well, yeah, John, you've been like inside and not mixing too much because I haven't got too many friends anywhere. And living in the countryside, I've had the dog to walk and my God, April, May, Christ, that was our summer. We had some fantastic weather, but it gets a bit lonely, you know. Um, but I, I popped through and say, my mum, I walk the dog and I see my sister, sorry, and my daughter once every uh, two weeks, which is nice. So my life hasn't been like a disaster, but it's starting to really niggle. And the masks, there's another thing I just went, oh, there's just no way I was going to wear them anyway. Before people were like torn anti-mask, I'd already seen enough information that, and not actually just information, your own heart tells you, doesn't it, that, you cover your mouth. Holy shit, come on. You stop an oxygen. The very thing that kills most of our bacteria is oxygen. And viruses. So I'm not wearing masks. So what? All I wanted to say in this piece is, because they've been putting the fear of God in us, I'm thinking, there's lots of people starting to say no. And I think we have to have many of us saying no. Now, well done, um, Berlin. Fantastic to see everybody out. And that needs to have a knock-on effect because you didn't see that in mainstream. If you did, it was a little flash talking about, oh, there was only a few hundred out. Fuck's sake. It's almost laughable now when you said the media. You can laugh at it if it wasn't so serious. So my take is, if they've frightened us, they are obviously frightened of whatever is behind our governments. I make mean, a world government controlled. That is very, very strange. That they are frightened and following orders. Yeah. I just want to tell you this little thing that made me say the following orders. I was watching something just to, you know, a documentary uh, cheer me up. Well, not right, really, sorry. It was the Nuremberg Trials. And and in essence, the people that we were uh, hanging, the soldiers of women and men, were saying, yes, I knew we were pushing them in the gas chambers, but I was only following orders. That smacks of this. Boris, stupid Johnson and your Starmers, we just need to pressure them. We need our MPs. I've been watching it. So you watch, okay, mainstream, we're going to expect that crap. But I thought in our government, we'd be having in the House of Parliament some questions from the people that's supposed to go through our MPs, not a peep. So send more letters and their emails to your MP to ask questions in Parliament. They'll not come through. Something's controlling It'll obviously be fear. Why Why they're not? It must be. They must be frightened of something. So maybe we need to just send a little message to see her. Especially to our government at this moment in time. If we find out it's true that you give these protocols for example, um, ventilators that killed, 
and you knew it was killing our people in their thousands and putting covid tags on people that died by falling off a bloody bus then there needs to be repercussions you can't just say we were following orders we hung people from nuremberg trials that said oh we were only following orders and what our scientists say well sorry let's line our scientists up as well and frighten them you know this is bullshit you're in the firing line for whatever comes out and we need to actually be saying this if we know that you knew that you were herding our elderly out of hospitals into care homes to suffer and die without their families around them shame on you when you should face consequences maybe not hanging nowadays but maybe they'll be frightened of jail or something i don't know and if we find out we already know that masks cause damage if these people die from your advice of wearing face masks then there must be consequences if you, we know that you've wrecked our economy through advice what how on earth does every single country come to the same conclusion wreck your economy lock people away put fear into them how come that's worldwide it, there's something sinister behind this yes i know love is the answer but i'm getting twitchy and i'm getting anxious and i think now it's time we need to get out there get your letters sent get your emails sent your mps and make them answer or ask some questions just so it's out there so it's televised because that's something that's driving me insane we say all this wonderful information pure scientists never see them on mainstream i mean it's just it's it is laughable if it wasn't so serious so that's my little message just thank you to everyone on this site thank you for the lovely messages of hope and um, let me know if there's anything local in Durham and I'll, I'll come out there we need to do something I'll be emailing my MP as well take care I love you all